a wee update on Blockyard and Solway Sands, these two layouts that I have up here. What one of them's behind me. Um, and just tell you where I've got to, which isn't a long way, but um, it's basically been a matter of getting the controllers working and the tracks cleaned. Uh, I'm wearing a, a cycling t-shirt and I'll just say a little bit about that first. So the other activity that's um, consuming some of my energies is sorting out the camping gear. It's put away and packing for my cycle touring holiday, which will be happening in two weeks time. And the uh, first thing I'm trying is my relatively new waterproof stuff sack that I got from uh, Little Araldi. Uh, and that now has got all of the camping gear, I think, in it. And so that leaves this bag, which will go on the front of the Brompton, for clothes, etc. Um, that will strap nicely onto the back. That clips onto the front. So I've got to see if I can organise all of that. Anyway, let's have a swing round. Uh, just have a look in here because this is stock that um, I think I put aside to run on these layouts at some point. I've got so much stock to sort out. Well, um, the track has been cleaned on both layouts. And then I had a couple of controllers and interestingly, neither would work. And um, there are a couple of little issues with the handheld controllers. Uh, one of the issues is that the this one was wired incorrectly. And what I had done was change the wiring on the socket on Solway Sands. So it's more standard in terms of its uh, wiring configuration. I've rubbed it off. And then um, hadn't, obviously, changed the wiring of the plug on this particular handheld controller. So it was completely incompatible because instead of AC being down two pins on one side of the plug, DC on the other, it was split across DC across there, AC across there, or vice versa. Anyway, not the standard configuration. So that explained that. And then there was a switch problem on. This was a very grubby old controller, and it had a switch problem. It was wired correctly. So this has been uh, completely taken apart. Um, I've stuck a piece of tape over the front. Uh, it's still in its original box, original wire, uh, a plug which is missing half of the plug, but I'm not going to undo it from there. But it's now working after I've just basically sprayed the switch and rattled it about a lot to get the switch to work properly. Uh, that's all that was done on that, uh, and then cleaning of the track. On this side, I think, as I said, um, this is wired incorrectly, so that was rewired. And uh, there's one screw in each of them uh, because the two screws in this one, sorry, going back to this one, this is a very old grubby one. And so the two screws that were in there, I had to remove by grinding them off with uh, the Dremel. And that was a lot of fun, uh, finding the right collar, grinding bit cutting discs. Anyway, I had to cut the screws off because they were completely rusted and it was a bit rusty inside. But now it's functioning okay. You can see the light coming on to indicate there's power. I haven't got a local on the track. Maybe I should do that. This one, uh, cleaner, everything's working. Rewire the plug, then it's fine. So just an example of that is, so I turn up, if I put the disc to forwards, Yeah, what am I doing? Not pointing in the right direction. Now, what you notice is the loco hesitating, needing a little push. Right, so now what we have 
is the next issue is lots of stock that's been around for a while and needs servicing. So that is going to need a little bit of lubrication, possibly cleaning of the wheels. The wheels don't look too bad. Uh, and then running round and round or running on a rolling road for a while. And as you can see, I've got one of my loco testing machines here that I can put the rolling road onto. There we go. And it's got an ammeter on it, so you can see the current drawn. Uh, got this second hand, not cheap. Um, and you don't need one. You can just use rolling road mounted on the track on your layout or on a spare bit of track. Uh, where's my spare bit of track? Here we go. Oh my goodness. Stand it up that way. So there is a piece of track fixed to a piece of wood with a wire on it that can be soldered onto one end of the track. A stop end on either end in case you have a local running straight on the track. Uh, that's so I can run something backwards and forwards on the track. So it's a bit too long to use as a rolling road, but you can set the rolling road on that and it's to do some testing. It could be used as the DCC programming track. It had various uses. So let's recap. Rear wire this one. Electronically, this one's fine. I have an on off switch for the power. Uh, clean track, so everything's working okay. You can see it from the track testing light over there, which is just, uh, this one's just an incandescent bulb. I have the LED one, which shows you direction or polarity with red and green LEDs. So that's back now to having the locos themselves serviced so that they run better. And again, if I put that onto there, I've not got a track tester on there, so I'm just going to rely on See how hesitant it is. And that's not to do with the track or anything, is it? Uh, that's just um, the loco itself. And so there we are. We know what the next job is. Don't we? On that. So uh, two working controllers there. In the process, I found a couple more controllers. Uh, this one. Fine. No problems with that one. And a similar one, which was just uh, in panel mount form. Whether it had had a case on it or not, I do not know uh, at any time. Uh, and again, with a faulty switch. So the orange one you've just seen had a faulty switch. And so I had another one of these with a very grubby knob. Again, very rusty and old looking but the switch was completely faulty in other words it, i could just get it working one direction in the other direction um it was overloading tripping the um, device inside so that was no good so what i've done is i've recased it i put a new knob onto it i've unsoldered the switch from the pcb I've added a switch here, which changes polarity, but it doesn't have center off. Now, if it's plugged into this layout, there is an off switch on the end of the layout. So it's all right there. I'm not sure what leakage voltage you get when these are turned down to zero. I say that because if you actually measure the voltage on them, sometimes it does turn absolutely to zero but on others you might get a residual voltage once it's turned down to zero and because it was deeper than that style it just wouldn't fit into the thinner box and so i've used two boxes together they're just taped up but it provides me with a handheld controller and the reason i'm sitting them both together is, is so that i know these are electronically the same controller inside well, that's that. I'm now 
getting I need to sort myself out I can pull that out going to need to get myself out with a servicing cradle the rolling roads uh, to do some loco servicing and maintenance uh, so that they are working because these are shunting layouts and so the thing I need is very reliable running from the locos they're testing shunting layouts are very testing of your uh, loco stock coupling uncoupling all of those sorts of things because um, you do need to run at slow speeds be able to stop and start and know you're going to be able to start again without having to reach in and push so um, that will do for an update for now so I'll pan back before I say goodbye so you get a good view without falling down the hatch until the next time then that's my update quick 11 minute update